Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our special guest at the undisclosed location, Mr. David Thrussell, filmed by the lovely Nickers. Stick around and listen. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. So, start, so uh, you know, here we are about six weeks out from US election. You know, we've got all kinds of trouble in the world. We've got, you know, long range missiles going into Ukraine. We've got, uh, you know, strife uh, in uh, Israel Palestine, obviously. And now they've started to attack Lebanon. So, where do we want to start? What do you want to talk about, mate? Oh, look, take your pick. You yep. know, um, the elections are rigged out here. Do you want to, do you want to go into that? Oh, I'm, I'm certain of it, actually. I'm yep. quite certain of it. Um, I, and I, if you want to zoom out, I know yep. you have a different opinion, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I would argue that if you zoom out of all of these elections, like all this, in fact, this whole political arena, yeah. if you zoom out a bit, you know, they'll throw in this personality and that personality and whatever, but it always ends up the same. After every election, they always generally almost unfailingly pursue the same course of action that they were before. I'll give you an example. In the US sphere, George W. Bush, okay, yep. who in certain quarters, certainly in my quarter, was a very unpopular guy yep. after invading Iraq and blah, blah, supposedly, and blah, 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 and all sort of stuff. Then we're offered the solution to yep. George W. Obama. Bush, which is Obama, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to be completely different. Hoping it wasn't. change you can believe in yep, and yep, all yep, that yep, rubbish, yep, okay? Yep, yep, and, yep. oh, he's going to get us out of all these stupid wars and blah, 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 blah. Okay, they insert this guy, the media's mm. in the rapture, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nothing essentially changes, mm. does it? The, but, the course, the but course there was remains a disruptor. the same. Well, there was a disruptor. I believe Trump was the disruptor. I believe they were legitimately upset by him and that they were like, this is just weird. You know what I mean? It's not like they didn't have, uh, you know, a dozen ways to Sunday to still blackmail him. They had put a little agent inside his family, the Kushner, the Zionist Kushner, um, you know, just in case, you know, just in case this guy ever did take power, they wanted someone close to him it's, to whisper in his ear, you know. It's, so it's not like Trump is not being compromised to some extent, but I do think that that election was a surprise to them. And obviously to another thing is like, if, if all this didn't mean anything, why would they go, to, you know, they go to so much trouble to try and control. Distraction. And you see them do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But they go to the public. Exactly. Give the, give the public a circus. Okay. Yep. Now, you, you're talking about the 2016 election, yep. you know. Look, I'll grant you, it's theoretically possible. I suspended judgment, as you know, yep. for yep. a long yep. time. You know, it's theoretically possible. But, I mean, let's, let's zoom out. Perhaps that's just a higher level of this kind of occult theater that I'm talking about, you know? Maybe yeah, yeah. let's give them a disruptor, you know, as a, as a lightning rod. You know, the, the forces no, I, of, I know that of theory. dissension are growing. Let's yep. give them a, a lightning rod and uh, yeah, but so like, they can focus their energies. The problem Meanwhile, with that. let's orchestrate this vast occult circus to harvest the energies of the public and distract them from the fact that we're circling them with all sorts of evil nonsense mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, maybe, but like... That's um, my suggestion. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I mean, look, I mean, I'm not saying it's not not within the realms of possibility. I just think, though, that Trump, for whatever reason, was some kind of dis legitimate disruption. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the 2024 election cycle, and obviously you have the belief that the two assassination attempts were staged. I believe they weren't, that they were legitimate attempts, but it doesn't mean that, for example, the people that shot at him, whoever they really were, I don't really believe they were necessarily those those two people who were the actual kind of patsies. I mean, it might have been an intelligence agency that just nicked his ear, but like, you know, it could, that could be a warning. That could be, listen, mate, you know, you're gonna, you're ready to pull your head in all because the next one isn't gonna miss, you know, or the, you know, whatever. So, you know what I mean? Like, I think that they do have an operational, for, for whatever reason, see, I think from a, for example, from a Zionist perspective, Trump is okay because he's an ultra-nationalist. And if you look at Zionism, Zionism is ultra-nationalism. So in a sense, you can see Zionists going, well, Trump ain't that bad. Right. But from the globalist perspective, Trump is a nuisance. You know what I mean? Because there, he's a nationalist. You know, he doesn't like a lot of the stuff, the mass immigration into Western countries, you know, destroying our, which is essentially a bioweapon. You know what I mean? Like, that's what mass immigration is. Because, you know, for example, in England, there's all these immigrants. And that's all people want in England. You know what I mean? You can't even say it in England anymore. You probably can't even say it here. They're starting to reach out wanting to, you know, like they're going to take people out of foreign countries and, you know, who say things against. All they, all British people want is an end to mass immigration. That's all Brexit was about. And obviously that won, which was another miracle. And they won't allow it. And they say, oh, that's because of which, colonialism. Which in an odd but it way, happens to Ireland, which was a victim of colonialism. Well, which, which is, in an odd way does in fact prove my point. Because Brexit 
you know, the Leave uh, contingent supposedly won that election. Yep. And you'll notice that none of these things that they wanted to put a stop to have finished. Yeah, but see, know, since then. It doesn't mean that that election win wasn't legitimate, though. It was a legitimate win. It's just that they were like, oh, well, we have to now sabotage it at the level of the deep state or the bureaucratic you know, class. Well, my, my argument, is I, I, I propose a, a larger argument, really. Or whatever, and everybody said no. And, you know, the voice to parliament. But you see them going ahead with it anyway. You know, and again, I don't think it was because that vote was not a legitimate vote. I think the Australian public doesn't want it. But the globalist deep state, you know, whatever, does want it. So in a sense that you are seeing, you know, you're seeing legitimate political reactions against what's going on. It's just that when, when they happen, when there's a win, they sabotage it. That's what I think is going on. But obviously you think it's at some next level that everybody's in on it, that Nigel Farage was in on it, and Donald Trump is in on it, Putin's in on it. And I think the problem no, with that no, thesis, David... I don't think they're necessarily in on it. Yeah, but actually. the problem with that is that it, it creates a sort of sense of hopelessness that no one ever gets anywhere near... The possibility of changing it. Now, I agree that they sabotage it totally, and that you know we end up with the same thing anyway. But at least it shows some level of resistance. <laughs> you know, what? How do you address that? That problematic that you know when you Look, say I, that I, everything that Trump I, is. You I, know, I understand a, the morale yeah, argument. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I do understand that argument. Yeah, okay, yeah. and uh, but I do think ultimately uh, we're best served reaching for the truth, aiming for the truth, no matter what it might be. I yeah, do yeah. think that we're best. But what if that armed. isn't true? <laughs> What if Trump legitimately is trying to fight them and it's just being sabotaged at every level? Well, it's it's possible. Yeah. I'll concede it's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd have Perfect. a lot of questions about it. Yeah. And I have a lot of suspicions about people it. People say he was a mason, but it was like everybody was a fucking mason in the 70s and 80s. Like, if you wanted all, to succeed in business, it doesn't mean every mason. You know, I mean, I'm sure your parents were masons. Well, my grandfather was a mason. It doesn't mean I'm a fucking mason. You know, it is, and I mean, most people who are masons are not involved in satanic rituals, you know, or whatever. I understand, but I think we do have to zoom out and actually look at the results. So we can, I would suggest, we can squabble about the details all we like. Yep. What actually matters is the bigger picture, okay? And the bigger picture tends to be that these globalist forces get what they want. You know, they'll yeah, throw us was, a few crumbs yeah. of elections, whatever. And I do think we have to be careful, all of us, we have to be careful about being... I would suggest being overly emotionally involved yeah. because the you know the best propaganda always works on our emotions you know and yeah. always manipulates our emotions yeah, but it's hard so to be dispassionate so, about the fact no, that someone's that. attempting to wipe out humanity <laughs> i understand that <laughs> argument but what i'm talking about is being emotionally involved in these political figures like Trump or Farage or whoever, Obama, blah, blah, blah. Being emotionally committed to these figures who I would suggest ultimately are just chess pieces on the board who are being moved around yeah, okay. to some degree, to some smaller you or don't even degree. have a chess. You don't even have a piece on the board. How are you ever going to win? No, I just nobody on the board that you would say, that's a legitimate opposition. That person is really trying to do the right thing unless you're hiding up in the country somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And, and you know what I mean? Like, there's a sense of hopelessness about that. Because technically, I, no, I, I at disagree. a common sense I level, disagree. at a common sense level, if that is the case, just just go along with it, which is what most people have got have done. Okay. You know what I mean? Because in a sense, it's like, well, this is happening. I, I understand we like your argument, yeah. but I fundamentally disagree. No, I know that. But You know, and I think but for very simple reasons, some of the reasons are very, very simple indeed, is that you are far better served pursuing the truth rather than getting wrapped up in emotional distractions. You know, so... Yeah, well, first of all, you have no the, idea. If the truth... If I mean, if how the do you tell? Is, no, no, let me finish. If the truth of the matter is that we have no representation in the political realm, yep. we're far better served withdrawing from that realm yeah, yeah, and yeah. focusing our energies in other areas yeah, at a local that are more level realistic. And, you know. You know? That's, that's my argument. Well, sure. If okay. that's the case. I mean, obviously, it's you know? one alternative. And I, I know that there are people um, who live that way and, and everything. I mean, I just think that, you know, what you can't give up completely on the political process because it's just the very fact that they go to so much trouble to handmaid the, the candidates they want into the positions of power shows that there, there is some danger there to them. Otherwise, it'd be just like, if it really didn't matter to them, you know, and everybody was controlled, what would they care if Trump got in? Yeah, sure, let Trump get in. But there seems to be some hatred of him that goes way beyond just the fact that, oh, I don't, you know. Like obviously, for example, with Bush and, 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 and they, they were both approved by the deep state, right? Obviously. And they were, you know, it didn't matter whether Gore won or Bush. But obviously, they probably preferred Bush because they were going to push wars. So technically, sure. at that level, Bush would operate better. 
yeah. you know. So anyway, I, I just think it's interesting. And um, right. um, look, I think this is a absolutely reasonable discussion to have. Yep. And I don't mind arguing Pretty about picky, it. Yep. I think that's perfectly constructive and a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Mm. I, you know, we have certain different views in this area, which is fine. Yep. You know, but I do. I do tend to pull out and see the whole thing potentially mm -hmm. as an occult theatre kind of operation. You know, that's how I see it. And I and I would caution. Mm. And I'm saying this to you and myself and to the audience that we just need to be careful of our emotional entanglements in various personalities. Okay? But you sort of have an emotional <laughs> entanglement to the idea that everything is controlled. You know what I mean? Like, no, like there not is necessarily. No... But just let me make one more point. Okay. Okay. I do posit the argument uh, that all of this, you know, all of these personalities duking it out, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah assassination attempts. It all looks, if you pull back a bit, it all looks a bit like the wrestling. You know, you, know, you said that, the heel. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, and, and Trump is point. cast as the heel. Sure, He's sure. the bad guy that some people love, you know, mm -hmm. and then there's the bland good guy that the other people love. Yeah, and they yeah, yeah. duke it out in the arena. And meanwhile, the crowd goes mad mm -hmm. and they're completely distracted from the... Mm -hmm. the the sort of palpable realities of their own lives. Yep, yep. You know, and how See, manipulated I, the whole thing is. I think the other problem with the way you often look at it is that there's a sense of almost, and it's not like you've you've had this view like only recently. You've always felt this. You know what I mean? Like you've since when you did Snog Lies. You know, it, it, all these themes are there in the first album you ever made thirty yeah. years ago. Yes. So it's like it, it paints a picture, and in a sense, this is almost like it's you paint a picture of this vast conspiracy that's so vast that it's impenetrable. You know what I mean? And, and that you know. In a sense, that's kind of almost counterproductive because it's like, well, how could you possibly ever defeat if everybody, if Musk is in on it and Trump is in on it and, you know, Nigel Farage? Well, and, you know, unsurprisingly, I disagree. No, I know, but, um, like, and but it is a problem <laughs> for your perspective. I disagree I with that as well, yeah, you know, yeah. I, because I think you're best served by realism. So if that is the realism of the situation... Yeah. Don't kid yourself. You, you know, kidding yourself, clouding yourself in a in a fog of fantasy yep. about heroes and villains mm -hmm. is simply going to send you further saying, from any kind I'm of success. I'm not saying there are not people who you would call controlled opposition. For example, in the freedom movement, there was that guy Ricardo Bosi, who was a former military guy, and I, I, I have no idea for sure if he was, but he, he was suspicious. And then you've got someone like Avi Yemeni who will talk about, gee, isn't it terrible that people were locked down? And then you'll go off to Israel and be like, isn't it great we're killing 20,000 children? And it doesn't really connect to me that, you know, like what's going on in Gaza is like a thousand times worse than what happened to us in Victoria. And how could he care about what happened to us in Victoria and yet cheer on what's going on in Gaza? It just doesn't make sense. So, you know, I can I understand... Think, I think for what it's worth, in my opinion... I think RV is so obviously controlled opposition obviously. that he's actually a decoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's his own goal. He, he, yeah, he's his he, own goal. He's like the lighthouse over yeah, here. Same with both. You can't yeah. avoid. They're both so you don't see sort of the other own ones, goals. You know, you know. and um, you know, but I do think it's, it's it is problematic. Uh, obviously, there are legitimately people that oppose this, and I think that we have to you know think well, there probably are people in power who also oppose it. For example, Elon Musk. I mean, you know. People have said, oh, you know, he wants to put chips in people. Okay, you know, that is, he's a transhumanist. But, you know, I've seen one of these Neuralink chips he's put into people, and this is a guy who's blind or who can now, or who has got the, hasn't got the use of his limbs, who can now use the internet. I mean, you know, and, and like it seems like when he's talking about that technology, it's voluntary. Now, if people want to put a chip in there because they uh, don't have the use of their limbs, I would probably want that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I agree the technology is a bit suspicious, but like, you know, it's, it's you know, I think there's a difference, and I think there are legitimately powerful people who are opposing it, and I think until they're almost obviously control opposition, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. That's my only position. I don't necessarily disagree entirely, but I simply uh, would suggest yep. that we're better served by, as, by being as realistic as possible, you know, and not being sucked up and subsumed in uh, emotional identification the dialectical, and emotional uh, you know, yeah. arguments, yep. you know. I, I do think... We are in a situation where we we are best served by having a, a lucid, clear-sighted identification of good and evil. Yeah. You know, and if we get wrapped up in the wrestling and the theatre of the whole thing, uh, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna be very sharp about it, and we're not gonna proceed in a clear-sighted kind of manner. Yeah, but we, are, we are caught up in a battle of good and evil. It's sort of reasonably pretty obvious. And, you know, and it's strange. You have strange bedfellows coming into this argument. You have people like RFK, who's a former Democrat, 
you know, supporting um, Donald Trump. And, you know, Tulsi Gabbard and, uh, you know, even Elon Musk was sort of left-wing not that long ago. I mean, he's, he's Mr. He's Mr. Electric Vehicle. So, you know, it just seems like there appears to be... And, it, and it's not just it's not just like this ha is just happening at, at that level. It's happening all over. I mean, there's a large... And we both are on the same page. We both want to resist this, you know. And you have a more, I guess, what you'd call grassroots, you know, off-the-grid kind of view of it. And I have a more... No, no, like, you know, let's go with a kind of right-wing populism thing that sort of Trump is spearheading. And let's see where that goes. You know what I mean? Like, um... But we I both understand. On, we're both on the same page, really. Uh, I understand. I, I'm just, I'm just a little wary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of being, no, I'm not saying you should not be wary. You should. Of, be. Uh, I do think it's, it's. You know, I maintained as yeah. much balance as I could for as long as I yeah, could. For example, this. But I do think Trump is a trap. I think he's the a trap. latest thing is that Iran wants to kill Trump, and that that immediately just makes me think. Because whenever you hear the word Iran is a threat, <laughs> that means Zionism. That bullshit simple. detector. Yeah, whoop, instantly. Whoop, so whoop, the whoop, fact whoop. that now there's this plot. And again, that could be used as a thing like, yeah, okay, there is an Iranian team after you, Trump, and they will get you unless you give us a war with Iran. And now, would someone like Donald Trump give them a limited war with Iran to get him as president? Yeah, probably. Trump would probably make that deal because he is transactional. He'd think, oh, well, I'll be able to, you know, block the border, but I'll have to give him the war. Trump is like that, okay? And now, he's like that. That's not a conspiracy. He's like that. You only got to read his own art of the deal to see that he's transactional. You know, if it didn't destroy the world and he could become president, he'd probably do it. You know what I mean? So, and he, he is. So, it's just, that's Need problematic. Out, that's far from ideal. No, no, sure. <laughs> but, like, you know, I, you know, I think he sees things, you know, he is opposed to what you call the globalist agenda, but he's not opposed to the Zionist agenda. I think you should be opposed to both, right? But, you know, in a, in a perfect world, but, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, we're not living in a perfect world. And I wouldn't mind seeing the globalist agenda sabotaged, you know. Uh, you know, I'd like to see at least one of them sabotaged. Because otherwise, and I think they're both connected, obviously. You know. Look, look, there's all sorts of possibilities there. I do think when you're trying to get inside the head of one of these figures, like... Yeah, of course, you can't. You, you, you're reading tea leaves. Of course, I mean, yeah. you, you know, uh, and I would suggest that all of them... I'm not saying I know precisely because I don't, yep. but all of them tend to have, you know, they do all of them to one level or another, have this figure, for example, of Jeffrey Epstein hovering in the background. Yeah, we should talk you about know, that. What did he know. come out? Did he just come out? And I mean, isn't it interesting? You got, you know, Hollywood covers up Harvey Weinstein, covers up Jeffrey Epstein, covers up Diddy. And I mean, we're not talking about, you know, just Justin Bieber got raped when he was 16 or whatever. This is like a. a Something that's been going on for it's 30 systematic. years. It's, it's systematic. It's systematic, and systematic. it doesn't appear to be that unusual. Yeah. Because these, not, these, are, you know, these three people are not the only people who are notoriously, you know, I mean, you had Kevin Spacey there for a long time. It just seems to be endemic. So I'm, I mean, I'm assuming there's, there's an industrial blackmail system going on, yeah, basically. You know? exactly. And I'm assuming it works on multiple levels. Yep. So on the, on the most pedestrian... Uh, you know, small scale. It'll it'll mean bribes. It'll mean peer group pressure, yep. media pressure, and all these sort of things. And then on a larger scale, you'll have this industrial kind of uh, blackmail operations happening. I'm sure that the same thing happens in Australia. There's probably multiple operatives in Australia because Australia has, you know, essentially zero journalism apart from yep. you know, independent journalists who yep. don't have any resources. Yep. But as far as mainstream journalism goes in Australia, that does have resources. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. Yep, yep. With a conscience. Well, interestingly, you know? so it, well, my point is that I, I don't doubt for a second that's happening in Australia. Yep. But we simply don't have any information about, or very yep. little. Information An interesting about commentator it. is this guy Eric Weinstein. I'm not entirely sure whether he's completely on the level, but after all, he's a Weinstein. But like, um, you know, he he worked for uh, Peter Thiel, you know, who is connected to Musk. Sure. Even Musk funded PayPal. But Thiel is a kind of conservative right winger, but. Is connected to Palantir, which is connected to the CIA. Anyway, he's a commentator and he is quite intelligent. It's worth listening to some recent interviews he's done. But he calls something like, you know, for example, like Epstein or Weinstein, kind of anti interesting in the sense that, like, for example, the Epstein story, whenever, say, 60 Minutes does a story on it, it rates through the roof. So, in other words, uh, 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 people want to know. Yeah, exactly. People a show like 60 Minutes is going to be great for their ratings.